In a separate lesson, we were talking about the wide array of technologies, tools, and industries that cloud computing can enable access and easy transition between. This is one of the big selling points behind why businesses use it, and also one of the trickier reasons why it's hard to describe what a career in cloud computing really looks like day to day. But to help understand the type of work to be done, let's break it into three different categories. And the first heading I'm going to throw up on here is build slash create. The whole goal here is to think that we are going to be creating things from components that cloud computing vendors are going to be providing for us. So if we think about Google Cloud out there or Microsoft Azure or Amazon Web Services, they have products and services that we can use to build larger, more complex infrastructure from. Here I'm using the analogy of building blocks being used to create a castle. And just like a castle, it is certainly a useful and interesting, magnificent construct, but fairly pointless without the kingdom and the people that reside within and are protected by and use the castle. And as you might imagine, any kingdom that's worth its crown is going to need the right kinds of tools to equip its people with to protect and defend the kingdom. This means that often these roles that are building and creating aren't just fabricating the infrastructure, but also the tools that we're going to need. And a tool could be a piece of software or an application or a system that was designed, or maybe even a little piece of automation that was put together. The point is that they enable or they add additional efficiency to the work of our Category 2 job roles. And those are the support slash operations roles. These are the individuals who are interacting with the tools and the infrastructure on a regular basis to deliver something for the organization. Typically, these are the technician and engineer types of roles who might be supporting the network or the storage. They are there to make sure that they respond to problems that may arise and handle those day-to-day -day activities of operating the kingdom. Now, as you look across the entire ecosystem, you're going to find that at smaller organizations, these roles might be played by a single individual, and they may play many of the roles. And as you get into larger enterprise organizations that may be global or multinational, you're going to find entire teams comprised of individuals handling these responsibilities. And that brings me to the very final category here, which is the business support side of things. Just like a king or a ruler would require advisors to help inform about the goings-on of the kingdom and inform his decisions, so too do we find governance and audit and service management roles within the organizations, making sure that these individual teams are all working together in concert to support business objectives. In my mind, these are going to be some of the most important roles that we'll find because they play this sort of liaison between what the business needs and the tools and technical elements that we need to accomplish that. This means that we need to be able to speak the same language and work with the business teams to understand their requirements, and then also be able to work with our technical teams to deliver those requirements to them and have them provide solutions back. When we consider what it would take for someone like yourself to break into any of these roles or to have the ability to move between them, it comes down to three key elements, and that is education, training, and experience. And I'm not talking about a one-time activity like going to college or getting out of high school or maybe even watching one of Bart's training videos, but rather developing a love of learning and recognizing that, especially in the world of information technology, this has to be an ongoing process where we're accumulating more and more training and experience throughout our careers, allowing us to develop even farther. Because if there's only one constant that we can expect out there in information technology and cloud computing, that is change. Dun, dun, dun. And just like the change that we see all around us every day in our regular lives, change can certainly mean opportunity, growth, increased productivity, or change can lead to decay and loss. And both employees and employers have to struggle against the constant friction that change causes in the world of information technology. Keeping in mind, friends, too, that this gas pedal just keeps getting pushed down harder and harder, and that rate of change increases every year. So this means that any career in cloud computing, uh, regardless of whether it be build, create, support, or working on the business side of things, is always going to require continuing education, and in many situations, a requirement to get certified and pass certain types of exams to demonstrate your proficiency and your ability to adapt to new skills and learn to use new tools. Which reminds me of the three skill sets that I think are most critical to a successful career in cloud computing. A love of working with and developing proficiency with tools, the ability to communicate and help others communicate, and also a healthy love of problem solving. Be sure to check out my other cloud computing lessons where we dig into these skills and also learn a lot more about cloud computing. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.